The next session involved with essential messages directly from the capital market on topic of the Thai capital market towards the new horizon. Our panelists are distinguished figures from both the public and private sectors, well recognized for their expertise and accomplishment. We are honored to have Chairman Federation of the Thai Capital Market Organization, Dr. Gop Sak Poodragoon. Portfolio Manager, GP Morgan Asset Management, Mr. Chet Benjawit Vilay. And the President of Giet Nakin Patara Security, Mr. Supachok Supak Bandit, join our panel today. Our Senior Executive Vice President of the Stock Exchange of Thailand, Dr. Sora Pontun Layasatian, will be our moderator for this session. So ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause to all the panelists and moderator. So good morning everyone uh, and welcome to the first panel of uh, Thailand Forecast 2023. Uh, the topic of course is uh, moving Thai capital capital market toward the new horizon. Uh, we have heard from Dr. Pasan, uh, the chairman of the Stock Exchange of Thailand, as well as uh, Dr. Setaput, Bank of Thailand governor, that uh, even though the Thai economy uh, is, uh, has recovered and we are on a firmer ground than last year, uh, challenges still remain. And we have heard the three layers of challenges that uh, both Dr. Pasan and Dr. Setaput have mentioned. At the very broadest is the uh, macroeconomic environment, uh, be it the uh, risk of softer landing of the global economy, the China factors, as well as the household debt concern in our economy. The second layer of challenge, of course, is on the uh, development in the political situations. Yes, we have now uh, the voted prime ministers, but still, there's still uh, need to be uh, more details on the policy coming forward. And the third layer of challenge is, of course, on the recent corporate event that uh, may have caused uh, some questions about the trust issue in the capital markets. So in these questions, uh, in the first round, I would like to ask our panelists, the three of them from uh, both the FEDCO, the Federation of Thai Capital Market Association, the investor perspective, as well as the intermediaries perspective. What are you take on this three layer of challenge? Are they real? Are they concerning? And what are, what are the implications to the capital market? May I first start with Dr. Gopsak, our chairman of the FEDCO. Thank you, <clears throat> Mr. Chairman. Uh, Acting Secretary General, and um, I would like to thank Seth for inviting me to be part of this um, important seminar for the year. I would like to say the following. Um, I really believe in the Thai economy, and I also always believe that we, we will, will be able to manage. Um, first, I want to say that uh, please be patient with our politics. <laughs> it will resolve itself. <laughs> Second, please believe in the long term of Thailand. Believe in our private sector and also believe in our regulator. They are very tough, I can tell you. In, in fact, I think our conservatism really pay. Uh, if you look in the term of the global crisis that have been impact every country around the world, I think the impact on Thailand has been quite manageable, quite minimal. Um, the export sectors, many countries dropped by 18%. 20%. Our export dropped 5%. But if you take out 
the gold portion. Thai people love to buy and sell gold. And then um, it dropped by maybe 3%. And if you take out the oil, which is the price fluctuate a lot from last year, uh, it's only dropped by 2%. So it really means that our export sector has been doing quite okay. I mean, compared to what's happening in other countries. In fact, I talked to my friend from Vietnam yesterday. They say that they export dropped substantially. Order of the company in Vietnam also dropped very significantly. So if you look in terms of macro performance, um, our economy is quite, quite okay. And in fact, um, our conservatism came from 1970s. You can see that the bank have very high um, capital. Um, our company also have a lot of retained earnings, uh, good profit, and in fact, in very good shape uh, in, in this present time. And our Bank of Thailand also have a lot of um, uh, reserve and have much room to play. Uh, in fact, when you look in terms of inflation management, uh, inflation is now at 0.23%, the lowest in the world, uh, maybe second to China. So basically, um, we don't need to raise interest rate too high. So as a result, uh, the impact, overall impact on the uh, corporate in Thailand will be quite manageable also because um, in the U.S. they have to raise interest rates almost, now th think about almost 6%. Uh, in Thailand, we probably go up a total of maybe 2% only. And at 2.25, 2.5, it's really normal time for, for the Thai economy. So everyone will be able to manage. The bank will be also doing quite okay. Also, you have to look at our fundamental. I think um, our fundamental is quite um, reasonable also. I think um, we have invested a lot of money in terms of infrastructure. Um, our subway will be completed very soon. Our logistic system, our uh, airport, uh, our port uh, is now improving. And uh, EEC area, even though it's struggling, but it's also improving. So basically, I think um, we'll be also in very good um, shape to, to support the overall growth of the economy. And in fact, um, I always believe in the chance of the ASEANs. Whatever happened, uh, they have been talking about the risk in terms of geopolitics. But in fact, when you talk to the investor around the world, they feel that, in fact, ASEAN is a true bet, they told me. They feel that they want to be in Asia, but they cannot find a good opening because Russia is closed down already, right? That is not a good entry anymore. China, a lot of question mark. I mean, um, it's closing down, and then um, you're not quite sure what will be happening next. Uh, India, um, good market, but not easy to operate. Uh, and, and India always love to take picture with Russia and China. So, so also another question mark, right? So as a result, people would like to be in Asia in a very peaceful place, neutral place, where you can trust that your investment will last very long. ASEAN is the place, and that's exactly quite good for, for Thailand and the whole region. And in fact, I'm telling you that when you look in terms of the FDI, we have been receiving more and more FDI into the regions, not only in Thailand, uh, Vietnam, Indonesia, Malaysia, um, and the rest. They run away from China. They want to be in Asia. And you know what? Five years from now, ASEAN will change like they were never before. Now you won't see the impact yet, but when this investment already completed, you will have a new capabilities in terms of production, technology, income generation, and also it will raise the earning capability of the people, new middle class, and also new supply chain evolving in the whole regions. It will really transform the whole thing. The investment that run away from China and try to be in Asia will 
transform the infrastructure of the whole regions. And we are very lucky to be in here. I mean, Thailand might not be growing very well, <laughs> but we are in very good location with a thriving economy all around Thailand. And in fact, in fact, um, our company also taking advantage of this opening. Um, I think uh, when you look in um, our stock market, uh, in our corporate, uh, there are a lot of companies who are participating in ASEAN, in regional level, also global level. And this will really contribute to the strength of uh, the economy later on. And finally, finally, uh, you asked me what are the risks. I think the major risk that we'll be running into is that can we really capture the, the opportunity that opening in front of us or not? Can we run fast enough to keep up with the rest of the region and with the world? That is the key question. Because things are changing rapidly, opportunities are opening up rapidly, a lot of money coming in. Can we get a fair share to come to Thailand? That is really the key question. So I think um, the seminar today, The New Horizon, is very good uh, uh, name of the, the, the seminar, very timely. We have a new government, <laughs> a new beginning. And in fact, in fact, I also have a high hope because the PM elected came from the private sectors, come at the right time. I think um, PM Prayut came also at the right time. Uh, he, keep, he keep the transition of the monarchy very smoothly and also ensure stability of the countries and bring us to this point. But I think Kun Setha as a private sector, originally, we also take Thailand into another level. Because in, in fact, also very appropriate to, to the environment. Because at this point in time, we are also competing with other economy in terms of attracting the FDI and also keep on changing economy so we can go up to the next level. So that's exactly why I really feel that um, the, the, the seminar come at the right time. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Dr. Gopsak has highlighted several important points. Uh, the most important is that uh, we should be patient with the situation, uh, given strong foundation of Thai economy, as well as uh, many of uh, resiliency uh, in the banking uh, and as well as in the bank reserve. And the coming up opportunities in ASEAN, uh, the only risk is whether we can capture uh, that opportunity soon enough. Let me turn the question, the same questions, on uh, to the investor perspective. Uh, I asked uh, Kun Chet from JP Morgan Asset Management, what are your thoughts on the macro, on the politics, and on the capital market uh, case at the moment? Can we be patient? Are you positive, or are you concerned of any point on this? Thank you, Kappa. First of all, thank you to the Stock Exchange of Thailand and also the organizing committees. Um, for inviting me to speak at this forum. Absolutely um, excited to be here. Thailand is clearly facing a lot of challenges. You know, we uh, can spend a very long time listing out everything from aging population, high household debt. We are losing competitiveness on some of the you know, manufacturing um, to some peers with lower cost. But I probably spend time um, about that on a different forum because, you know, um, because the thing that I would want to highlight on the back of those challenges are two things. The first thing is that the authorities, those in power, like we heard from the keynote speaking as well, from Dr. Setput, that they acknowledge this problem. They're not dismissive and, and try to take it away and, and has tried to put policy in place to get us out of that on a sustainable manner. So I take encouragement in that. The second thing is, within all challenges, of course, lies and opportunities. If I were to compare Thailand really, it's like, um, if I use sport analogy, Thailand is a little bit like an aging athlete. You know, we were reasonably competitive in our young, when, we, when we were young. But as time goes, of course, we grow a little bit old, a little bit slow. Uh, might have picked up a few injuries that we take a little bit of time to shake off. But that do not prevent 
good athletes from competing at a still at a at a, at a competitive level. It's just how that athlete would need to pick and choose on where and how they would want to compete to look after oneself better and continue to enhance on where you are good at. You cannot just go out there and just sprint again and burn cash. You might need to look inwards and, and, and enhance the strength further. In that regard, actually, as other cops has pointed out, Thailand actually has done reasonably well in that. The emergence of the service sector, tourism, we can talk at length about it. Medical tourism is in the full swing right now. If you see the recovery post um, COVID itself has been much stronger than, um, than, than you can see. There's an actual you know, real demand and not only the old recovery, but also the new markets that we managed to, to, to open as well. So, you know, it, and I think this would continue to accelerate as well. So the change that is happening amidst the challenges that Thailand is facing. The stock market and the Thai listed companies, in my opinion, are basically a reflection of this. The companies that learn how to position themselves well, that recognize the change, that recognize new opportunities, can actually continue to thrive very well. But on the flip side, of course, there'll be companies that stuck in the over, a little bit left behind, a little bit slow to change, and that unfortunately will, of course, underperform against um, those who manage to capture the change. I think from the investor perspective, really looking at this set of challenges and opportunities, um, there are three things that I always remind myself and also try to, try to push the stakeholders within the market forward as well. The first thing is we must recognize that the opportunity set in Thailand particularly in the stock market, will now be selective, not broad-based. We can no longer rely on rising tide, lifting the airy boats anymore. Because of the opportunity and the challenge that fast changing, there'll be companies that are doing much better than others and those who are less so. So as investors and as market participants, we need to be quite clear on what opportunity set you are looking at. What kind of company this is? Is it a little bit, again, back to spot analogy, is it a little bit like an old athlete? If that's so, is this athletes looking after themselves well? Are they focusing on the right thing? Are they, you know, continue to try to go out there, try to sprint again and burn cash? Or are they looking inwards, optimizing the operations, focusing on cash flow and maximize shareholders' returns? If it's a new athlete, because Thailand has high out on the IPO stats and also the new companies cap, uh, setting up to capture new opportunities, do they have the right mindset? Do they have the right access to talent pool and capital? to realize that growth opportunity and to also sustain the duration of the, of the business rather than just you know, become, become like a firework and then disappear. So the first thing. Second thing is that we re keep referring back to historical data can be extremely dangerous in a market like this. Of course, looking at history is very important, particularly in terms of the company execution track record, how has they been treating minorities, because on that front, history tends to repeat themselves. But referring to operational metrics, like peak margins, peak earnings. A company used to generate this much um, revenue, this much uh, margins, and hence they would recover back to the same level, can be dangerous. But even more than just, it's actually the reference of the historical valuation. And I still see, it, my, I myself include, sometimes I still look at, because it's so convenient thing to look at, but it's actually dangerous. Because of the fast changing opportunities and challenges that they face, that historical data, historical valuation only reflects what was happening before. We need to be much more forward thinking in this. You know, the companies that is doing a new high margins, that is tackling a new opportunity set, trading at higher than average historical valuation, is that a bad company? The companies that is doing um, in the recovery, but might face challenges that prevent them from reaching the same um, level, trading at the discount to the historical valuation, is that a better investment? So investor needs to be quite clear on that as well. The third and quite important is the dialogue, the communications between investors and corporates and also other stakeholders. So far, when you look at the corporates, always focus a lot on the economics and duration of the companies. What I mean is economics is means how can the company make money? You want to understand how the company make the money. You want to understand the duration, um, how, whether that, the way that the company make money can sustain for a very long time and you know, generate consistent returns. But th th those are all important, but equally, if not even more important to the eventual investment outcome, is the governance of the companies. And now governance has many definitions, and a lot of them, unfortunately, is about ticking the box. 
but I, um, through the experience investing in Thailand, there are quite a number of companies with a decent economics and um, duration, but in the end, investor doesn't get the returns, that doesn't get to realize the returns to its full potential because of the governance side, such as particu in particular capital allocations um, of, of companies that I believe that through uh, further focus, so um, to, to enhance on the governance side, would allow the companies and investors and all stakeholders together to realize the, the, the value of the company in a much better way. And this is not just about calling for better rules and regulations. Of course, you know, the, on the stock market side, we can continue to impose better standards introduced at the, in, into the corporate. But it's also, I believe that it's a responsibility of the collective stakeholders within the market to, in, to create an investment culture where we ask the right questions, when we become collectively more demanding in a, in a, in a, in a right way against the corporates and other, and other stakeholders to propel and capture this opportunity. To, you know, just to summarize again, we are definitely facing challenges. In challenges, there's opportunity. You just need to ask the right questions and, and have the right mindset in approaching this market, which will no longer benefit everyone, but on the path that would benefit can go a long way. So not only can we be patient and believe, but uh, in every crisis, uh, there's opportunities. And this time around, it's more selective opportunities. So you need to be mindful of uh, not only looking at the past data, but uh, forward looking uh, on the fast changing world on how company can capture, as well as on the governance uh, uh, structure uh, that uh, uh, something to, to look for in selecting companies. So let, let me turn to uh, uh, Kun Supachok, uh, who uh, represent uh, intermediaries and uh, between both the company as well as uh, from the investors. Uh, what are your take on the, uh, the macro politics and the uh, corporate uh, risk that we are facing today? Okay, thank you. Um, let me maybe just chime in to Dr. Gob and Chait a bit on the, I mean, the, the Thailand, right? It's, it's a very different place for you to invest in now. I mean, if we look at the outward uh, foreign investments in 2008, that figure as a percent of GDP was around 5%. As of 2020, it's closer to 30%. So you're no longer investing you know, in Thai companies just for the Thailand domestic growth. You're investing in Thailand you know, to get exposure to, to other economies as well. Um, as of 2021, 20, about 36% of listed companies have you know, invested abroad. Um, revenues from listed companies, 32% come from overseas or come from exports. Right? So that's, I think that's a, the, the, the most important uh, uh, development. Uh, number two is, um, I mean, obviously the elephant in the room is that you know, set index has been flat for a number of years now, uh, and hopefully to change. But had you been more selective, if you invested, you know, over the past 10 years in um, certain sectors such as uh, hospitality, your return, your, your annual return would have been closer to about 8%. Healthcare, 12%. Retail, 18% per year, right? So you just need to be a lot more selective than you were. There's no, you know, tides, uh, the boats are not rising on, on, on just one tide. So I think those are the, the maybe just to add to, the, to Dr. Kapsak and Kun Chet. Now, let me spend a bit of time on the, the governance issues that, um, you know, have been, have been mentioned. Um, I think first of all, um, while the, the recent cases, you know, have been Horrific, right? I mean, in terms of you know the, the just the sheer audacity of the wrongdoings and how many people it has caused damages to. I think we need to to keep the right perspectives. Um, these represent a very small minority of the Thai capital markets, right? And that does not mean that we will not or we are not doing anything. We are doing a lot of things. But, you know, this is, by and large, a very small minority of the market, okay? Um, what we are doing, so let me just um, speak on behalf of, you know, the SET and also as a market participants. Um, 
so we're doing two things, right? One is along the lines of prevention, all right? So on preventive measures that you will see, um, you see a lot more disclosures, right? And the SET has, you know, started this already. Um, you see that um, investors and uh, investment communities will get a lot more warnings, right? For example, if, if you have been following, I mean, the recent um, public disclosures about concentrated trading activities, you know, things like this, you'll see a lot more of it. Um, we have talked about, um, you know, disclosing net settlement uh, statistics of the trading. We have talked about maybe disclosing share transfers in some form or, you know, margin lending activities um, or even supplying more information to the authorities so that uh, actions can be taken quicker, right? That's a um, very important part. The second part of the preventive measures will probably revolve around tightening some rules, right? We talked about the use of NVDRs you know, where it's been used probably not according to, to the intention, right? How we're going to tighten those rules, uh, backdoor listing, listing requirements, even listing maintenance requirements. All of those things we are working on, right? So be patient, as Dr. Gopsak said. Um, however, on the preventive side, um, I just like to make a note that we can't, we can't overreact because all preventive measures have cost, right? We should not be, you know, coming out, we should not be treating everybody as potential criminals. Otherwise, you're saddling costs onto everybody while trying to catch a very small handful of wrongdoers, of, of bad actors, right? So that's um, a very important uh, uh, thing to keep in mind. Now, Preventive measures alone are not sufficient. So the second group of measures that we are talking about, we are uh, discussing is on the deterrence, right? And deterrence, um, a lot of it will be on the enforcements. Um, but if you look at what we can do in terms of deterrence, there are three things, right? One is we have to make sure that actions are effective. People who commit crimes should be punished. Right. Second is they have to be punished quickly because, you know, delay in, 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 in punishment is also a form of injustice. And on a third note, the penalties have to be severe enough. And, you know, altogether these three, we should have a better deterrence. Um, we need to work on all three in Thailand, um, but I'm hopeful because, you know, I'll, I'll come back to why I'm hopeful later. But I think just to give examples of why we need to work on all three, right? So effectiveness, um, it is notorious that it's very difficult to, to um, you know, to get uh, convictions on, on, on the crimes that we have seen, right? Um, that's why, you know, there, there have been introductions of civil sanctions, uh, you know, by the, the SEC. But um, we probably need to, to empower our authorities more. Maybe we're talking about, you know, having the SEC have formal investigative powers. So that will be a very big step towards, you know, having a, an effective enforcement. Um, quick, quick justice. Again, our, our track record hasn't been too good. Um, According to stats compiled by KKP Research, in the U.S., it typically takes about 12 to 18 months to, to reach an indictment uh, and some years, you know, three to five years for the lawsuits or the trials. Uh, for us, it's more like three to five years to a formal accusation and probably, you know, one to six years, you know, if it ends in uh, civil sanctions or, you know, civil penalties, but probably close to 10 years if we're talking about criminal uh, suits, right? Um, severity, uh, how, how severe it is, right? In Thailand, um, insider trading is about, you know, the penalties are two times uh, the benefits gain and up to two years of prison terms. In the U.S., it's 
five million dollars and up to 20 years, right? Just to give a, a comparison. For stock manipulation, um, we're probably about one to five million baht in penalties and up to five years in prison terms. In the US, it's uh, again, $5 million and 20 years, right? So big difference. Uh, with that said, I'm hopeful because if you look at the two recent cases, uh, the authorities have been very quick, right? Um, we, you know, with the thanks to the SET, the ASCO, the anti-money laundering authorities, the police and the SEC, um, proceeds were quickly frozen. Um, Anti-money laundering suit is underway and criminal proceedings are to follow, right? Uh, it took the SEC only four months to um, formally charge the, the, the wrongdoers. Um, in another case, um, we have seen SEC um, you know, use their authority under the securities law to freeze assets as well as to limit you know, overseas travel. And it took around six to seven months to, to, to formally accuse. So I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful. So let me just stop there so people can get a second round of, of comments in. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Subhachok. I think uh, the key point that uh, we have heard is that uh, there are a lot of challenge, but it's important that we recognize uh, the situation, recognize the problem, and act on quickly. Uh, and we need to be uh, more realistic on the magnitude. That is only a small portion. Uh, whatever that we do, uh, don't overreact and don't uh, make it more difficult for the good people to conduct the business. I think that's a, that's a key lesson that we have learned. Uh, let me go to the second round. Now that we have uh, gauged some uh, of our panelists' thought on the challenges, uh, I think the question now that uh, what can we do? What have we done? What can we uh, ask the new government to do? So let me uh, ask uh, our uh, Dr. Gorb Sak to help uh, tackle the second round question on uh, what have we done, what can we do, and what can we ask the government to do? Maybe it is a little early to give advice as they are forming the government. <laughs> but let me try my best. <laughs> the capital market, we work closely with the government to make sure that uh, the economy will progress and prosper. And for me, there will be four key areas for policy support that we would like to ask them to consider. Four set of policies. The first one, I think, will be in the area of technological advancement. It will be impossible for Thailand to prosper without tackling these questions. I mean, when you look in all the markets, all the new market cap come from technologically related company. We have to move that way also. I think we are very good in terms of soft power, in terms of tourism, but over the long run, that will not be enough. Um, so we would like to work closely with the government in terms of how can we really progress in the new digital revolutions, in the industrial revolution four. And this means three or four things. How can Thailand become the hub of all the pro professional of the world? We have to recognize our shortcoming. I think we have good people in Thailand. But if we, were, if we would like to do good work in terms of technology, in, in terms of R&D, it's not adequate. It's still lacking. Uh, so the best advantage of Thailand is that they love to be here. Everyone loves to be here. Many professionals also would like to be in Thailand. If we can really open up our arms, we can really set up a set of policy to attract many people to come 
and get a head start. Instead of take 30 years to build up our researcher, we can do it in two or three years. So we can become the hub of all the great professional who can use Thailand as the base. We can also become the hub of startup. I mean, um, uh, many people complaining about Thailand don't have enough startup in Thailand. Too little unicorn, right? And we have been trying. I mean, the regulators, uh, the authority have been trying, but we still have limited number of unicorn. So what can we do? If we don't have our own, why don't we invite the unicorn from Arthur to, to, to be in Thailand, right? If we don't, if we don't have enough animal, like Galapagos, so we, we import them, right? We can have them as a home. We can become a forest of all the unicorn. But it depends on the government to have the right set of policies to open up their arms. And we can become the hub of or the international headquarters in the regions. They want all to be in Asia, right? They need a place to control the whole regions. And Thailand probably the best one, I can tell you, in terms of very happy living, very good um, uh, accommodative facilities. The new CBD will coming up within five years. And I think this is probably the right location for everyone. So if we can keep on doing this thing, we will have a new set of players, new set of people. And it will really complement what we have at this point in time. And we can rise to become the key center of the new Asia, in the new Asia centuries. Second, second we also need to work on our presence. I think um, uh, as we work on our futures, our presence is also very important. We have to move up the change. Our existing technology, existing industry is now become obsolete very quickly. Um, we have to move up in terms of EV, in terms of new medical tourism. And in fact, we are thinking in terms of intermediate S curve. I mean, we can think of S curve, but some of them are very far away, aerospace, robotic, too far, right? Too little in terms of return at this point in time. But we are having set of industry that can be very easily upgrade. Um, car manufacturer, we are very good in the regions. Uh, in terms of medical, we are probably one of the best here. In terms of logistic, we are also very good. In terms of digital, we also quite good in terms of animation, in terms of um, uh, PR, in terms of advertisement, and many other things. So basically, if we can really think of what we can do in the next two or three years to reflect what we have, that can be also very, very important. So it gives us extended S curve as we build up a new one. The third one is that we also need to support our company in one certain aspect. We have been discussing, um, Kun Superchok also mentioning about the fact that Thai company are very much regional company. Um, I've been in the regions for many years, and I can tell you, I think in ASEAN, Thai company is the most regionalized company. Um, this came from the unfortunate fact that we, don't, we are not growing very well in Thailand. <laughs> Our grass is not too green, so we need to have to go outside. Um, but but it's, it will become our advantage later, because I've also been working in Indonesia. Their grass is too green, so the company do not want to come out. But it will hurt them five years later, ten years later. Because, because over the next five years will be the most important time for the company to go outside and capture the market. You have to become the first. You have to become the front runner at the early stage. And this is exactly the time when Southeast Asia is rising. So basically, the government can do a little bit more. I mean, we can take a look in terms of Japanese way of supporting 
how can we go out together how we can go out and conquer the regions and 10 years later this will really contribute to the strength of the Thai corporate and the Thai industrial sectors and finally finally I think we need to create the right set of environment I think the infrastructure in Thailand is quite good enough already but we have to do some more um, especially in key infrastructure projects this will raise the value of Thailand as the key location as a key gateway to Asia the EEC projects very important they can change the name no problem <laughs> to make their own but please serve the projects this is very important project for Thailand and at this point in time a lot of company are coming BYD uh, many Chinese company many European company American company are taking position in in the area do more uh, push the projects and in fact I also would like the government to also have another projects in the Andaman area we need a Western gateway we need a deep seaport that we can link up with a new market past 20 years the market in East Asia in Tianjin in Beijing Shanghai Shenzhen uh, Korea Japan Hong Kong Taiwan right but now the market will be in India Bangladesh and maybe later on in Africa if we keep on sending the product out of Lam Chabang this is, will be difficult so since we are on two sides why don't we have another one right it will really raise the profile of the country and make Thailand even more attractive in terms of being the the right location to produce and we also have to do more in terms of the, the right environment um, the FTA um, we, we should work more on this thing um, I mean Vietnam have more FTA than, than Thailand how can that happen right we have to keep up and and very good thing is that uh, per Thai party is known for FTA they are the one who push Thailand toward these uh, directions so let's hope for, for them to to do some more second round and finally finally I think we have to work more on the regulations our law are outdated and not adequate for the 4.0 era so basically uh, regulatory guillotine process need to be done uh, lucky that uh, the SEC FEDCO uh, said and everyone in the industry are now working together to making sure that um, the rule will be simplified eliminate and in fact this cost nothing no need for the budget um, but the outcome is really really beneficial I think if we can do this for Thailand we go very far <laughs> thank, thank you Kap, uh, Dr. Gov. I listened to your full combination I imagine that uh, not only we have to make the glass ourselves uh, greener but we also support uh, our companies to mourn other people's glass too <laughs> so uh, the support has to come in uh, uh, infrastructure the FTA and we need to be mindful of the changing environment uh, you mentioned about the Andaman that uh, support the growing market in India uh, let me turn to the same questions uh, from the investor side uh, what should we do or what should uh, you ask the government to to help um, I, I will not comment about <laughs> um, uh, overall, I think Dr. Kopp actually summarized it quite well. Those are the four areas that I definitely hope that the new government um, has both the, uh, the, the intentions and also the, um, the, the, the time and political capital to continue to, to, to execute those. I would emphasize on two things in particular. The first thing is the, um, we already kind of onto something. Now, let's talk about earlier about Thailand executing changes pretty well in developing the service sectors around tourism, medical tourism, turning FDIs from just inwards alone increase the complexity of the inward FDI and also turning themselves into an investor into other market. But on the tourism side, it also comes with a little bit of a, of a, of a challenge in itself as well. Many other countries that try to build itself and, and gain footings on the, um, 
on the tourism side, but has failed to turn that one-time income into a recurring experience. So we still need to do more on how to keep the experience in, in Thailand fresh, make it, you know, if we want to double down on tourism in any way, make sure that we have infrastructure, right, both in terms of soft and hard infrastructures to allow the, um, our visitors to come and, 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 and be able to repeat and find new experience in Thailand consecutive rather, rather than just you know, come and plan the fact that, oh, I have been to Thailand um, and, 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 and that's it. So that's one area that I, I, I think that new government is kind of um, already acknowledged and, and would continue to be on, but it's an area to be able to digest this opportunity on a sustainable um, way. Also on the rules and regulations that other cops have touched, has touched it, it's not like that, it's not that we are bad but it might be more outdated in some area of which need to be simplified and effective that people, that the stakeholders can make sure that they can rely on these rules and regulations rather than confuse them. Um, that would be uh, very helpful. And as you say, it doesn't take much uh, cost. It's just about you know, focusing on and, and, and deliver on that. As far as the stakeholders concerned, I again would go back and emphasize on the corporate governance. And now, in particular, because we are turning more of an investor as well as suggest, there's a lot of uh, money going out. Increasing portions of the Thai listed companies are in the area that is more difficult for investors to actually look at. It is a new investment in the abroad country. We as an investors might not be as familiar with the market environment. The only thing we need to increasingly rely on is actually the governance of the company. And in that, I'm not saying, again, that Thai companies are bad in that, but it is always an area that we collectively as stakeholders need to continue to work on. There, of course, are many principles of corporate governance, but I usually focus on the three things that we always need to improve on. Okay? The first thing is fairness, the second thing is transparency, and the third thing is accountability. Thai corporates, uh, a very significant part of them, uh, a little bit lacking, I, I still believe, in, in all these three areas. And the reflections of the weakness in these three areas, unfortunately, reflect in sometimes uh, could have been better capital allocation um, decisions. We, if we can enhance, continue to enhance these three areas, fairness to shareholders in terms of things like information, uh, disclosures, not only financials, but in other areas, um, not only to fairness to retails and inter institutional investors, fairness to um, local and foreign investors to access to the same set of information, explanations of what the company is, understanding of the companies and what they're doing. And also fairness to shareholders in the sense that I believe that we could have done better in terms of shareholders' voice. Um, things like whistleblower cultures. We need to establish in place a clear and consistent process on how investors or any other market observers can report um, or ask questions and protect themselves in an event that things you know, go wrong. For example, the enhancement on, and, and, and clear process on things like cross-action framework. Transparencies of disclosures, not only just normal financial disclosures, but an insight more into what the company key decisions, as well as the um, other surrounding the things like conflict of interest, and also the, um, you know, the, the uh, when, for example, then they do the M&As on their longer views on just justifying any M&A deal with just it being EPS accretive. <laughs> and the last thing is accountability of management and board of directors. Um, you know, inst instead of uh, just allowing the, or they can say anything, promise, overpromise, underpromise, or whatever, and then do not have to be as accountable for those um, things that they, that, that, that they promise on. We need to change the investment culture on this. Again, I'm not calling for a tightening of rules and regulation excessively. This is about refreshing the guideline, but also we as stakeholders, again, need to come together, ask the right questions, and kind of push the companies in, in that direction as well for, for a better outcome. And I think as we are tackling this new change, this is the time that we need to focus on this much more than ever. Not only you mentioned about uh, if you're going to double down on tourism, we need to make sure the experience uh, is uh, refreshed. As well as uh, you mentioned, similar to Dr. Gopsak on the uh, uh, regulation uh, revisit that uh, need to be updated as well as tightening in some aspects, such as the, or the CG. So in the interest of time, uh, Kun Subochok, you mentioned quick, uh, last round yes, that yes, 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 uh, yes. you are hopeful. Uh, yes, we'd like yes. to hear 
about so that. So I'll be very quick. Maybe just add on the, the, the wish list on, um, you know, everybody wants to see Thai companies go abroad, right? Um, and, and I think um, maybe just um, when we're designing incentives or, you know, rules and regulations, the authorities need to be, to be competitive as well, right? We need to compete with, you know, other governments, other countries around the world. So uh, we can't um, come up, you know, we, we need to, to be competitive with other countries. Otherwise, the activities will not happen to in Thailand or to Thai companies. So that's, you know, on top of, of uh, Dr. Gop Sakhan uh, uh suggestions. Um, second thing on the, the governance or the enforcement, I think um, we need to to, to, you know, and, and I said we with a capital W, right? Everybody involved, not just the authorities, but we probably need to take quicker actions, but we need to be, we need to distinguish, you know, between, um, you know, who are the, the, the people that we need to go after. We need to go after the, the, the wrongdoers, the, the intentional criminals, right? Not just the people who made errors. Um, or, and, and especially, um, I mean, one example uh, is, is maybe the energy and the scrutiny we spent on our asset management colleagues earlier in the year would have been better spent elsewhere, right? Uh, you know, go catch the, 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 the wrongdoers and then we can clean house later, right? We can improve on things that, that we need to tighten up later, but, you know, who is the, the, the main culprit, right? So, you know, those are my additions to, the, to Dr. Gop Sak and uh, suggestions. Thank you so much. Um, I would like to uh, have uh, each of the panelists to uh, have some last, no last note uh, to our uh, uh, audience today. Uh, of course, uh, we have uh, quite a, a big audience, around 200 people from uh, many investors, uh, domestic and abroad. Uh, any last note on the uh, new horizon of capital market? Uh, what should we be aware of? Or what are the good opportunities going forward? I, I think great opportunities in front of us. I think um, usually each area will take turn to be on the stage. And this is our time. This is the time for ASEAN to be on the stage of the world. But, but I have only one word to share. I think the most important word for me is execution. I think that this is our drawback. I think we have to focus more and more on how can we really turn opportunity into reality for the country. And, and, and hopeful that the new government will help us achieve this execution and it will really change Thailand and it will put us in a very important, well, in very good position later on. Thank you. So execution to capture the opportunities. Uh, I think I would just go back to the earlier points and, you know, we Thailand is definitely going through a set of challenges. We can definitely, you know, continue to talk about that. The problems are being recognized, the problems are being addressed, it might take a little bit of time on some of the issues. I think the, we collectively know our own strengths and try to capitalize on that. And I agree that we can be hopeful on those you know, coming to realizations. As far as the capital market is concerned, opportunity will be there. We need to be able to thrive within that and be selective, understanding the, the investments and as, as long as we can identify the right company doing the right thing, the right cycle, um, we, we can still generate quite a handsome returns uh, with investing in, in, in Thailand, in my opinion. So yeah, that's a, that's a key thing. Okay, so um, maybe to the, the foreign investors present here or listening in from, from abroad, um, I know a lot of you are probably very underweight Thailand right now. So please go by selectively. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm speechless, but... Uh, <laughs> so I think um, we have concluded this session on the uh, capital market toward New Horizon. We have learned about uh, challenges, 
we have learned about the opportunity. Uh, we have learned about uh, the recognition of uh, some difficulties as well as some uh, way forward to capture opportunities. But uh, as Dr. Gopsak mentioned, execution is key. And as uh, Kun uh, Chet and Kun uh, Supachok mentioned, that uh, if you're underweight now, uh, go out and buy. So I would like to thank you very much, uh, the audience, as well as the panelists uh, for the first session today. Uh, thank you, Dr. Gopsak Putakun, the Chairman, uh, Federation of Thai Capital Market Organizations, uh, Kun Chet, uh, portfolio Manager of JP Morgan Asset Management and Kun Subashok, uh, Z Governor as well as uh, the President of Gietnakin Patala Securities. Thank you so much. Thank you very much all the panelists and moderators for a very interesting and informative session.